In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, he says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now notice here, he says here in verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that, or we could say so that, you may be able to stand. So you want to know how to stand? Here's how you stand. You put on the whole armor of God. Now, the idea here is, and the tense is used, is that you put it on once and for all and you don't take it off. Okay? You don't take it off before you go to sleep at night. Nobody wants to die in your sleep without the helmet of salvation because you go to hell. Right? So put it on, keep it on. All right? Now, first off, finally, my brethren, be strong. That word strong is a Greek word in dunamo, and it actually comes from dunamis. That in Acts 1 8, Jesus said, You shall receive power, miraculous ability. After that, the Holy Ghost come upon you. Same basic word. He says, be strong, be empowered with miraculous strength and ability in the Lord. In other words, recognize where your strength comes from. And in the power of his might. That word power there means great vigor, great force. And it's funny because he emphasizes this three times here. Be strong in the power of his might. Strong, power, might. All these are different words, but they all, they all have uh, their synonyms, basically. Where they are all talking about the power of that is exerted in a way that it cannot be resisted. You got to get that. When you are strong in the Lord, in other words, when you forget what you're good at or what your strengths are, and you are strong and you put your strength in him, in other words, you get your strength from God and you're leaning on his ability, his miraculous ability, when you're strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now watch. To do that, he says, put on the whole armor of God. So he's telling you how to be strong in the Lord and how to be strong in the power of his might, okay? How do you do that? You put on the whole armor of God. Now, that, it says, so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, that word may be able to stand is literally dunamai, which is another form of the same word dunamis. So he says here, if you are strong in the Lord, you will be a- and put on the armor of God. You will be able. You will be energized. You will be empowered. <clears throat> now notice this to stand, and that word "stand" is a, a Greek word histomy, and it literally means to resist. Okay, to be able to be able to resist. In other words, he's saying if you do this, you will be able to resist and stand against the wiles of the devil. Now the word "wiles" there is the Greek word methodia, where we get the word methods. And he's saying that we will be able to stand against all of the methods of the devil. Okay? So you have to understand, putting on the armor of God, understanding what that means. It's very simple. Because all it is, uh, is it's very simple. He says, stand therefore. Have it. Now, once you put on this armor, you'll be able to resist. And he says, you are able to resist. And don't think that you're going to put on the armor of God and not be able to resist. So if you're not able to resist, it's because you have not put on the armor of God and you have not been strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So this is all of you. This is what Paul wrote about. He said, when I'm weak, I'm strong. Why? He said, man, I'm going through all this pressure and I feel weak like I'm being attacked. But at that moment, I recognize and I put on the armor of God. In other words, I recognize I have that armor. And so because I have that armor, now I can stand, and I know I can stand. So whenever I do that, even though I was weak, his power in me makes me strong. Do you get that? So when you feel your weakest, automatically switch gears. Automatically exchange your weakness for his strength and know that his strength will empower you to be able to stand against the methods of the devil. Now, how do you do that? Well, First, you have to have your loins girt about with truth. Now, don't worry about all the locations on here, loins, breastplate, and all that kind of stuff. That's not the important thing, even though it has some symbolic meaning. But understand, first, you have to be, and, and now the loins girt about with truth, the, what they call the, the girt at that point is what held all the rest of the armor together, okay? And so it all fastened together. You'd put on this belt basically, and then all the other armor would fit, would fasten to it so that it became like one piece. So the first thing, 
truth. Listen, you cannot stand against the wiles of the devil and believe wrong doctrine. You can't believe the sacred cows and stand against the wiles of the devil. So you have to believe truth. So first, you have to have truth, okay? Then he says, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. So what does that mean? That means that you have to understand righteousness. That means you are right with God and that your rightness is from him and not on your own. So the devil has nothing in there to come at you and go, well, what about this? What about that? No, no, no. His righteous. You're leaning on him. Every bit of this is leaning toward him. Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. What is the gospel of peace? What they said whenever Jesus came into the world. What? Peace on earth. Goodwill toward men. God will toward men, we could say. So this, the preparation of the gospel of peace is knowing you are at peace with God. You have righteousness with God. You're right with God. The devil has nothing on you. Now, the reason he said to have your feet shot with this is because the feet determine how strong you can withstand a push, okay? If, you're, if your feet are just standing, you're easily pushed over. But if your feet are with the preparation of the gospel of peace, the sandals the Romans had had what they called hobnails on. They were like little nails in the bottom of the sandal that gripped the earth. Like, today, we, it'd be like football cleats that you, when, you dug, when they dug their feet in, you could not move them. It dug into the ground. They were rooted and grounded in love. You understand that? But that, that is what, that's the peace. And so your feet, you can, I mean, you, they could take your foot and push it. It would not move because it's cleated. It's into the dirt itself. You cannot be moved when your feet are, are standing like that. And then he says, uh, yeah, above all, not last, not least, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able, that word shall be able, it's the same word, you will be empowered, right? It's not like you're on your own in this. When you do the, when you take the shield of faith, you are empowered. At that moment, power comes into you to withstand all and quench all all the fiery darts of the wicked. So that shield of faith, notice, will quench all, not some, all. Now, your shield may take some hits. You may know you're in a battle, but they won't touch you. Let your faith take the hits. Why? Because faith, now understand, faith in, as a shield has no voice. It doesn't complain. It doesn't murmur. It doesn't talk about how bad the fight is. Faith in you has a voice, and faith in you should always be speaking, but your shield of faith has already been spoken. Do you understand? You've said your faith, and now it will take the hits. Let your faith take the hits without you murmuring, complaining, or adding to it and talking about, oh, it's a bad fight. It's a bad fight. No, it's a good fight. Why? It's a good fight of faith because faith wins, all right? Now, finally, almost finally, and take the Helmet of salvation, okay? And what does that mean? That means you have to know that you know that you know that you're saved. Nobody can talk you out of it, right? Now, first, you have to examine yourselves whether you, to make sure whether you be in the faith. But once you've examined yourself and you know you're in the faith, now you stand, you don't let anybody talk you out of it, amen? And so you have to know that you are saved. Now, that we may have to do some teaching just on that. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The sword of the Spirit is, okay, listen. This is not the sword of the Spirit, okay? It's this that's in here that comes out here or comes out in an action. That's the sword of the Spirit, okay? It's the rhema word, which simply means the logos that you act upon and that becomes real to you. That's all it means. It does not mean that God sends a certain word and quickens it to you. That's not what it is talking about. It says, it is the word that you act upon. Now, you have to remember, we are to be doers of the Logos, James 1.22 tells us. So we're not to be doers of the rhema. Rhema is the word we are doing, but you don't do the rhema. You do the Logos. When you do the Logos, it becomes rhema. Does that make sense? So don't sit and wait for a word from God or for him to quicken a word. It's not about him quickening it to you. It's about you becoming obedient to believe it and do it. Amen? It's as simple as I can make it. 